Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for Manage Your Practice Remotely and Productively as part of the LTRC Industry Insights Series held every Wednesday. Our speaker today is David Hepburn. David Hepburn is the Global President of ActionStep, a leading cloud-based practice management software company. As president, David leads operations and strategies across the company's US, UK, Australia, and New Zealand offices. He is an experienced businessman and commercial strategist with a background leading innovative software businesses. David's career has spanned product development, solution design, customer success, and sales marketing engagement for a range of software solution providers focused on business transformation. Thank you all for joining us. We'll now begin the webinar. Thank you very much, Sasha. And Hello, and thank you for joining us today uh, for the webinar on law firm productivity trends um, working remotely. And we're delighted to have so many of you on the session today. As Sasha said, my name is David Hepburn. I've been with Action Step for about a year and run the company day to day. I've spent more than 10 years building software for professionals such as doctors and lawyers. And my passion is making a difference and helping our customers deliver better outcomes for their clients. So just a quick intro on Action Step uh, for those of you who are not familiar with us. Um, Action Step is an all-in-one legal practice management solution built in the cloud with workflow automation at its heart. Action Step uses workflow to get rid of admin distractions and organize lead legal work and giving lawyers the headspace to listen, engage, and make a difference to clients every day. We want to make sure firms have the flexibility to evolve and grow um, so that um, all firms um, of all practice sizes um, can benefit. So let's dive in today. Um, I plan to cover some uh, key lawyer productivity trends and talk about what impacts the productivity in your working day. You know, obviously remote working right now, uh, given all of the global drama with coronavirus and COVID-19, you know, is, has become you know, paramount for many of you. How do you uh, organize and run your practice from home? Obviously, um, there are many cloud uh, trajectories occurring in the world right now, and Microsoft have um, a really deep and expansive cloud strategy, and we think um, that can benefit your firm. And uh, hence, that leads us to actually trying to manage your practice from Outlook. And we're going to look at why it's important to be able to manage and practice, manage your practice from Outlook and Word and all those places that you spend your time, um, and also enable to get control of your inbox. You know, we believe that technology needs to meet you where you are. This is a key ethos for us, um, and we think that will make it easier for you to do what you need to do. You know, it's really interesting how we get our hands on a new piece of technology, whether it's a new phone or a new app or even just at the ATM, uh, even just an ATM. You know, how familiar it feels so quickly and how intuitive it is to navigate. And, you know, it shapes our willingness to keep going back to it and keep using it. And you know, that said though, most technology, particularly technology for lawyers, requires you to leave the familiar and learn a new system or way of doing things. And that's what really sparked our ambition to try and meet lawyers and paralegals um, where they are. Uh, with our technology, rather than constantly forcing you to leave the familiar and uh, context switch, uh, change lanes and move to another system to achieve what you want to achieve. So here's four trends that um, I'm going to talk about today. Um, obviously, the remote working trend, you know, major focus that we're all going through right now. Um, and generally, where lawyers spend the time, um, you know, which clearly is less in the office than it was before. And I'll talk about some of those um, trends a little later as well. You know, how um, lawyers, paralegal administrators spend their days too is changing. Um, you know, the systems you spend your time in are many and, and very fragmented. You know, and actually one of the major themes that, uh, you know, orientates us is this um, handling and multiple tasks and context switching, you know, between these different systems that you interact with and that kills your productivity. Um, you know, and I suppose finally, uh, we'll talk about mobile apps themselves um, and why we choose to do some things on mobile apps when our computer is sitting right in front of us. You know, these are trends that come up time and time again in our user research in our, in our third partners. So let's, let's talk about the first one, remote working. You know, our first trend is a topic uh, many of you are familiar with currently. I'm sure 
all of us uh, on the call, maybe not all of us, but uh, most of us are probably trying to figure out how to organize our businesses from home and our teams from home. We're in a unique position at ActionStep to interact on a daily basis with many law firms around the world adopting this new normal. So how are we seeing um, ActionStep firms cope? Well, for firms that are already in the cloud, which are all of our customers, obviously, they're spending their time acclimatizing to work at home. They're focusing on building great team collaboration and client communication, and thankfully don't have to struggle with system access and side. But for the majority of firms that are still not in the cloud, it's a real struggle to get up and running remotely. They have to make quick decisions to get cloud-based systems, sometimes if they choose, or struggle on with their existing systems. Um, they may not have the full functionality of their case management system from home, and are, I think some of them that we're talking to are finding it hard to stay connected to that on-premise system or local server that might be back at your office. Also, the reality is that legal technology has evolved rapidly over the last 10 years. Uh, many VPNs into local systems are not fit for today's standards of security, um, which frankly you know, is pretty scary for us all. And as I know, uh, Laura's and you guys are so focused on your client data security. And so for those of you that chose to move to the cloud, uh, well done. And for those that you haven't, all is not lost. And I promise this is not a pitch just for Action Step today. Um, I know many cloud providers are well set to transition firms to the cloud. And we're going through a number of virtual implementations right now. You know, a couple of large firms who really needed to get on board quickly, and it can be done. If you don't want to change completely to a new system, there are a few tools available that can help you in the short term. And we've actually decided to give one of our practice management products away for free to law firms during the COVID-19 crisis for up to six months. So firms who need to can use it until they can go back to their usual system when things settle down. So obviously, we know how technology um, is not the only aspect firms are struggling with. You know, people are working from home independently, um, sometimes in less than ideal environments. But for many, this is a completely different way of working, and it has been adopted overnight in many cases. So for team collaboration, information um, sharing, morale, you know, these types of things can really suffer um, in these new environments if you aren't well set from a technology enablement perspective. So, you know, I know there's been a deluge of articles and guides uh, being shared about how to work well remotely, but, um, you know, I'm an, an organization psychologist, but I will share with what I've learned from virtual law firms because we have many customers like this. Remote working is their normal business model. They see many benefits in having a virtual model from a cost, flexibility, and access to talent point of view. And so how do they do it successfully? Well, there are, there are a number of themes here on this slide. Um, there's a presence without being present. The common strength with virtual firms is how they develop a presence in their client lives and within their teams without actually being present. You know, number one is deliberate communication. Yes, they use technology like Microsoft Teams, Zoom, you know, we're on that now and are completely in the cloud, but just as important is how they communicate with each other and with clients. We have seen this ourselves at Action Step, the importance of scheduling daily check-ins, turning on video, having Friday get-togethers, using messaging the way we normally chat over coffee in the office, talking to people face-to-face, -face, but virtually. Your firm culture can stay intact if you keep up these habits of connecting with team members and offering these uh, members of your team flexibility in terms of hours they work and trusting them to do their work is key. People like working for virtual firms because of the flexibility and trust um, that those uh, firms give them. You know, virtual firms retain their talent as a result. Consistent client experience protocols. You know, the same approach can be applied to clients. Having a clear set of protocols that your team can follow in relation to client comms is, crit is crucial. You know, it's, uh, you know, it maintains that consistent client experience. And when you, know, should you, you update your clients on matter progress, well, you can set tasks, reminders for this to happen in any uh, good matter or case management system. You know, better yet, you can automate it so clients get updates whenever a new milestone is reached within that matter. Your clients of virtual firms are loyal to them because they get great experience every time they deal with them, just as they are loyal to traditional firms. Visibility across practice is also key. Virtual firms obsess with data and reporting because it gives them the same sense of firm productivity that other firms might get from walking the office floor and seeing how people are working. Every day, they use reports and dashboards to understand all the things we often ask people. You know, what are you working on? How are things progressing? How is our billing looking? What are the holdups? What resources do you need? Next theme on this side is automation. 
Virtual firms automate as many processes as possible so that tasks can be assigned without having to ask someone personally. This ensures things are done as they should be, supporting consistency for clients and making sure matters are compliant. If things are automated, they can be tracked so things uh, you know, are visible to everybody. Discipline about tasks um, and, and a focus on tasks is important. One thing I plan to talk to you about is reducing distractions or context switching. Successful virtual firms train their team to really plan out their day to allocate time to specific tasks. This is publicly shared is busy. They are trained to stay on task, not to get distracted mid-task, um, and to be efficient. The purpose of this is to improve productivity and get better margins, one of the main benefits of a virtual firm. And finally, um, you know, dare to be different. Um, this is actually one of our values at Action Step, and many virtual firms have decided to create an alternative model for how, how to practice law. They're doing things their way. They have uh, s uh, slightly different approaches. They work uh, uh, for one another, um, uh, sorry, and, and they may be individual contractors to that firm for specialist events and, and cases that they're required to participate in. Um, you know, they take the lead. Um, it's up to you to try uh, things differently and see what works or doesn't work for your firm. So again, as I said, virtual uh, and remote law is one of the fastest growing areas, you know, we see um, globally. And, you know, we think 75% um, of US companies plan to shift at least 5% um, of their employees to remote working permanently. 96% um, of lawyers use a smartphone to do some amount of legal work. I mean, that's um, probably not that surprising. Um, but, you know, obviously for me, as a cloud-based legal firm, a legal software firm, you know, what I'm interested in is when productivity of mobile devices and laptops becomes equal to or greater than working at your desk. And what you should all be interested in is that same thing, because realistically, um, what more and more law firms are moving towards is, is these potential benefits of using technology across your practice in different ways. So, you know, as lawyers, there's enormous pressure to maintain and improve your client relations. You're getting closer to your clients means spending more time with clients in their offices or homes, you know, really understanding their pain points and communicating with them regularly on matter or case updates and turning work around quickly. Moving through the milestones of their matter will efficient, with efficiency so clients can both be satisfied and are likely to recommend you to others. And, you know, and to reach this goal, you know, being mobile and being able to take that technology with you and access it wherever you are you know, is really critical. On to our, our next trend, you know, how do lawyers and paralegals and administrators spend their days? What are the systems you spend the most time in? Well, a um, lot of things going on on this slide, and I'm sure a lot of things going on in your days. Um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, where do you spend most of your time? You know, on this slide, you'll see things like email and Word, you know, which or Gmail and um, uh, Google Docs. Uh, you may have, you know, other platforms that you use within your practice. Obviously, calendars are important, you know, time capture tools. You might spend time billing. Um, you may spend time in other document automation systems. You know, there's all sorts of things going on there. And I'm sure you find that you jump between these systems. You know, do you parcel up your time or uh, in each system, do things in one and then go to another? Or are you continually working between them? Um, and do you do your admin as you go, you know, or do you try and catch up at the end of the day? So that might be tasks like time tracking, um, you know, and other follow-up activities around a particular matter or case. Well, according to our feedback from our users, it turns out that for many of you, the most used systems um, are the places, uh, you know, you spend most of your time and are most productive. Those are places like email and Word. Um, and as many of, of you are using Microsoft Office products and we're seeing a huge uh, migration um, of our client base into those uh, platforms as well, um, you know, that means you do spend a great deal of time in that lock and word each day. And from a practice point of view, it's, it's counterintuitive to leave Outlook to update other systems information that, you know, is already in Outlook. So I suppose we know the systems where we spend the most time um, you know, how productive are, are we um, in, in using those different systems? You know, are we doing what we need to do in one and moving on, or are we jumping between these systems? Well, it's the latter. Uh, we jump between them all the time, and this is called context switching. And even when you aren't doing it delivery, the way we work today 
in multiple systems or multiple devices in multiple places with multiple colleagues grabbing your attention makes it impossible to avoid context switching. You know, and our job at Action Step, we've taken on this mission, is to try and reduce that switching and increase that productivity. And the truth is, you know, our brains are not capable of focusing on more than one thing at a time. You know, this was a really startling statistic for me. You know, 80% of the intellectual property within firms is communicated or stored in an email. You know, so the information does exist. It's just in the wrong place. It's not in your matter or case management system. You know, it's hard to get it in the right place because that requires you to move to another system um, and try and upload the email or the documents attached to the email. You know, it takes a lot of effort to do that. Um, you know, and this disconnect, um, you know, between um, email and practice management system means that 80% of intellect probably just continues to live and sit within email solutions or um, file storage devices on uh, computers or other shared devices, but not in the context of the matter or case. You know, one other piece here, um, you know, this is from the American Bar Association, is pretty clear. You know, all attorneys should be tracking their time and updating files contemporaneously and recording time every day. It is too difficult to try and recreate your work on a month, um, you know, you know, in a week or a month at the end of the billing cycle. So if you try to do that, you'll probably make mistakes. You know, this is, again, a big deal. Um, you know, document management and retention rules are in place, you know, primarily for the security of client information, you know, and many workers and, and members of your team, uh, I'm sure, from time to time, you know, fail to comply with these uh, policies and procedures. And they're critical um, for our businesses and so important for, you know, our ongoing compliance and success. I think, you know, again, this is another interesting stat. So, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, this study by Gartner, you know, shows that about 50% of the information, you know, firms need is missing from the files on the systems where the information should be. You know, this is pretty disappointing, I suppose. You know, how are we supposed to know what's happening with a client matter or a case, you know, or report across practice utilization if we haven't got, you know, um, all the information in the right place or accurate, accurate billing forecasts? The final theme here that I'm just going to talk about is, and I'll just talk about it quickly, is um, really this, this, this trend towards us using mobile apps um, rather than uh, computer browser screens. Um, you know, I suppose you could be sitting at your computer and yet use your phone to do everything like transfer money, send a file, look up a contact. And you might think the reason for this is uh, linked to being out of the office more and therefore using your mobile phones to do more work. But it's actually more about how easy apps are to use. Mobile apps by design have to reduce down the amount of things you can do on them. They focus on the things people need to do most frequently. So we at Action Step think about developing new systems and software for browsers or mobiles. You know, we need to prioritize these things because actually um, this is where we are most efficient and can do some of those key things that we need to do every day. So I mentioned at the top, um, Microsoft have got a um, massive strategy and you know, transition from their on-prem, um, on-device um, technologies into the cloud, and that's their Office 365 strategy. You know, obviously, you know, we're here to talk about productivity, and we know many of you use these products, um, and you know, the the Microsoft uh, trajectory, you know, is 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 massive because, you know, cloud-based um, software such as Microsoft integrates very well to many other different subsystems. It's easy to do because it's in the cloud and we can connect directly to that cloud rather than something sitting inside your practice um, on a server. And many of the issues lawyers have faced before, you know, can be eliminated through this move to the cloud. Um, for example, you know, having to check documents in and out, being unable to collaborate on documents in real time, you know, losing work because it didn't save to the server, you know, so we're seeing this really crazy adoption, um, you know, of these types of cloud and particularly Office um, and Microsoft 365 services. So, you know, latest show that, you know, now more than half of all sensitive data that is stored in the cloud is actually in Microsoft's uh, platforms, which is extraordinary. So, again, we're here to talk about how you can potentially manage your practice from Outlook. Um, I'm going to show you a little demo of some of the things we're working on, but let's just talk about the problem here. You know, we know from our session today that Outlook and Word are one of the places where you spend a lot of your time. 
you know, firms um, need a matter and client um, information and case management information all in one place. Um, and that place is probably not an Outlook inbox um, or a set of directories associated with Word on your computer. Expecting uh, you guys uh, to tag and file documents into centralized systems of predetermined technologies is completely impractical. So you know you find plenty of ways to avoid getting around these steps of filling, you know, in, in moving documents and putting them in the right place. So if it's hard, you don't do it. We also talked today about context switching and how that kills productivity. Um, you know, and actually. Fundamentally, the move to the cloud is creating a lot more efficiencies and opportunity for productivity improvements. So given that you spend a great deal of your time um, in and around Microsoft 365 and then you know, surround it, uh, we're looking at ways that we can surround that technology with the things that you absolutely need to do and do it within the real estate of where you spend most of your days. So what we've done is built an add-in from Microsoft 365 that takes a number of core functions and features of ActionStep and brings them into your Outlook or Word um, documents. Um, and to give you a real example of this, um, I'm gonna, actually gonna talk you through uh, you know, what we've, we've done and we've built. So with Action Steps add-in for Office and Outlook 365, um, you can update client files with relevant documents. You can communicate um, uh, on the matter. You can add notes. You can review the matter status. You can record time. You can assign tasks. And you can keep the client informed right from within Outlook um, with a skinny um, Action Step um, application add-in. This reduces the productivity and loss of moving between the different systems um, and improves the quality of the data in your practice management system because real-time updates are more complete, timely, and accurate. Now, Action Step is, not, is, is now the only practice management system with this degree of, of, of comprehensive Office uh, 365 integration, and there are various plugins and things. We've had one historically, but we've really gone very deep and rich in terms of function and feature available within this, within this add-in that I'm going to show you shortly. Before I give you a quick look at the add-in and its benefits, I want to take this opportunity to give you some further context about where, go where we're going. Um, you know, our purpose as a business is to make lawyers awesome. You know, we have a deep respect for what you do, and you impact every milestone in our lives and businesses, and the difference you all make has a profound impact on your clients' personal and business success. It benefits all of us to have the tools and the freedom to work as well as we can, and that's what we aim to do. So based on the deep understanding of how you guys work, this Outlook Add-in's uh, broader strategy is to meet you where you live. And those are the places and systems that you are most productive and letting you manage your practice and keep working and organize wherever you are on that device. So I'm just gonna uh, click over um, to my um, other desktop, if you just bear with me a moment. And I'm going to show you my inbox. Uh, if you just bear with me a moment. Okay, I believe we can all see uh, my desktop again. So this is my inbox. I've got my action step inbox here, and you know this is how I organise my screen. I've got um, uh, my e emails here, and a preview screen here. And you'll see on the right hand side of my screen um, the action step um, added here. So as I migrate through, and I've created just a couple of documents here um, to kind of help with this um, demonstration. You know, if I click on this uh, this matter here, uh, sorry, this email here, um, what the add-in has done is gone away and looked at who this uh, email is from, and it looks within Action Step to see any related names related to that particular matter. So actually, you know, you can see my name is related to these four matters that it suggested in the add-in on the right. Now I actually want to track this matter to the Smith family. So I click on the Smith family matter, but I could easily have looked up another matter or searched for another matter um, if I wanted to um, through that search bar that was in the add-in there. So what that's done by just literally clicking on that um, uh, uh, email has taken the email and all its attachments and synced it with uh, the matter within action step. And you can now see, and I'll go across to action step in a moment and show you, but you can see now that I have a high level view of the matter. I've got a home screen here and make this a little bit bigger. Let's just bring this out. 
Um, I've got a home screen here, um, which describes the overview, the, some of the key participants, the last file note, and any billing details associated with the matter. Um, I can review the parties um, that relate to this particular matter. Um, I can look at the file notes associated with the matter, recent ones, there's only two in respect to this particular matter. And look, I can look at time entries that have been tracked to this particular case or matter, the Smith family wills and estates matter uh, case. And I can finally interact with, you can see here that there are two tasks assigned um, within this matter to me, and I can actually um, interact with these and complete tasks um, within the screen too. Um, so the other piece of the jigsaw that I said you could do was actually do a lot more with this. So this plus button here allows you to do a lot of those very simple tasks that you might want to do. I can create a new contact associated with a matter um, inside the add-in um, and uh, add that and, and create that within the matter. Um, I can, uh, from that screen, also create a very simple um, file note. Um, just say I've updated the file. Um, and I can also, uh, within this matter, create a task um, and assign it uh, to my, a member of my team. Um, and finally, uh, within the screen, I can also very simply and easily uh, create a time entry. So if I spent, uh, you know, I don't know, 10, 10 minutes, half an hour, whatever, responding to a particular email, um, I can quickly uh, track time and I can select quick codes from all the standard quick codes that would exist uh, within my time billing options. I can make it billable, non-billable, um, the types of rates, the bill behaviors and all the rest of it, you know, all here um, and core to this um, add-in screen. Um, so again, what you can see here that I've not had to change context or move to another system to actually ensure that um, the components of this particular email and the documents are now attached to that. So if I now just move across to Action Step itself, uh, many of you won't have seen um, Action Step, um, but um, this is uh, the view, this is our, obviously a browser, this is Chrome, uh, which is where you know, I live um, and use um, my board browser from here. Uh, this is the Smith Family Matter, um, and you can see here uh, that um, uh, documents associated, there's my email um, that I just uh, tracked, David, the Smith Family uh, Documentation Foundation on the 8th of April, that was yesterday. I'm um, here, I'm in, in, uh, based in New Zealand, so uh, I'm afraid I'm already on the 9th of April. Um, and it actually has, has tracked it in chronology. In this matter, I actually had tracked an earlier email, but it will also have taken um, the documents associated with that and tracked them into this matter as well. So you can see that within Action Step, Anybody else that has access or permissions to access and interact with this matter now has the very latest view um, of the world. You'll see my file note that I added here. I just, uh, that was the file note I created one minute ago. And any new tasks um, or calendar appointments that are created for this particular matter will also exist here. So a very, very simple and easy way from within the real estate that you spend time and live in um, to interact with the matter. One other thing I'll just note for you guys, um, You'll see here that there's a little green um, tab and we've, we create a category uh, for email. So this, this particular email, the Smith Family Document Foundation email and attachment have now got a marking of green, which shows you very quickly and easily in your inbox that that particular email and attachment are now tracked to that particular matter. Um, I'm going to show you um, a bulk assign in a moment if we have time, but I just also wanted to show you um, on a mobile device um, how this works as well. So you're looking um, now at my iPhone, um, and that's my Outlook app on my iPhone. Um, and actually, that's the, the email that I just tracked here. But if also, let me select another, another email, um, this one here. Um, so you can see in this email, um, I've got um, an attachment and a, and a very simple um, email. If I now click on these three little dots um, in this area of the screen here, um, it opens up the opportunity to interact with the action step add-in. So if I click on that, um, it now opens up um, the same view uh, that um, you saw within the add-in. So you're now on your mobile, um, on your Outlook device, and I can now, um, sitting on a train or on the road or from wherever, now take that email that you saw here. I can search for matter um, here. Um, I could just um, easily search and it would return, you know, 
all matters relating to Smith. I'm actually going to choose the Smith family matter. It also suggested the Smith family matter because it had seen what I did before and learns uh, from that. And there again, within the application, you can see the same view uh, that you saw. This is my iPhone that you're looking at now. I have access to the parties, the file notes, the time entries, and I can also add contacts, file notes, tasks, and time entries you know, through my uh, mobile device as well. So again, bringing that technology and power um, to your mobile device is also one of those key themes we're thinking about. Great, um, and I think that is all the time that we have for today. I'd like to thank Action Step and everyone for attending our webinar as part of the LTRC Industry Insights Series. I'd also like to thank David one more time for presenting today. If you are curious about future webinars, please check out the ABA LTRC page or follow our Twitter at LTRC for updates. We will now conclude the webinar.